So you hold down that power button, you see the screen go black, and you think, okay, I'm off the grid. You feel secure, private, but what if I told you that even right now with a black screen, your phone could still be a live beacon tracking your every move for a hacker? Sounds like something out of a movie, right? A phone that's off should be, well, off. But the truth is, it's a lot more complicated and frankly, a lot more unsettling than you'd think. And that brings us to the big question we're tackling in this explainer. Is your power button a real kill switch or is it just creating an illusion of privacy? We're going to break down exactly how your phone can be turned into a tracking device even when it looks completely dead. We'll get into the clever software tricks, the deep hardware exploits, and even some surprisingly simple physical gadgets that can be used to watch you when your guard is down. All right, here's our game plan. We'll start with the sneakiest methods, malware that literally fakes a shutdown. Then we'll see how features designed to help you can be twisted and used against you. After that, we'll step into the shadowy world of state-sponsored spy tools. And then we'll look at some low-tech but super high-risk physical trackers. And most importantly, stick around to the end because we're gonna wrap up with a solid defense plan you can actually use. Okay, let's kick things off with what is, in my opinion, the most deceptive trick in the book malware that hijacks your phone's shutdown sequence. You think you've powered down, but you haven't. Your phone is basically just playing dead, secretly running in a low power state, and still listening, watching, and tracking everything. On the Android side of things, there's a really nasty piece of malware called Power Off Hijack. So here's how it works. First, the malware gets onto your phone and digs in deep, gaining what's called root level access to the system. Now, when you press and hold the power button and tap power off, the malware intercepts that command. Instead of actually letting the phone shut down, it just plays a pixel-perfect video of your phone's shutdown animation. The screen goes black, it looks and feels completely off, but it's not. It's just entered a stealthy low-power mode, where the cellular radio, the microphone, the GPS, the cameras, they are all still on and completely controlled by the attacker. It's wild. And this really shows you just how big the deception is. A real shutdown on the left, that's it. It's a brick. No power, no data, no communication. It's totally disconnected. But a hijacked shutdown, that's just an act. It's a performance. The malware just plays you a little movie of a shutdown, while the phone's core systems, its eyes, its ears, its sense of location, they never go to sleep. It's like a digital ghost in the machine, running silently while you think you're completely offline. And before you iPhone users get too comfortable, you're not off the hook. Security researchers over at a firm called Xeops built a proof of concept they dubbed No Reboot. And this thing is incredibly sophisticated. It shows how the exact same trick can work on an iPhone. It can fake the entire shutdown and restart process. So you'd see the slide to power off screen, you'd swipe it, the screen goes black. Maybe you even see the Apple logo pop up like it's rebooting. It's all a simulation. The phone never actually powered off, giving an attacker persistent unbroken access to the camera, the mic, and your location data. So the next threat we're gonna talk about is a bit different. This is where a feature that Apple actually built to help you can be weaponized in some pretty scary ways. And this is a system that you, know, you probably use and trust all the time. And this really is the great paradox of our tech. The very same tool that's built for your convenience, like Apple's Find My Network, can be flipped on its head and used for surveillance. Let's break down how this helpful tool can actually be used to hunt you. So even when your iPhone is off, it's not completely off. By design, certain chips stay alive in a very low power mode specifically for the Find My network. Your phone is constantly pinging out a tiny anonymous Bluetooth signal, like a little beacon. And any other iPhone, iPad, or Mac that happens to be nearby, and there are millions of them, can pick up that signal, note the location, and securely report it back to Apple servers. Now normally, this is all anonymous and encrypted. But here's the catch. If a hacker gets into your iCloud account, they can just log into the Find My app and see your phone's location on a map in real time, even if it's off. They're using Apple's own system against you. But this is where things get really crazy. Researchers at a German university demonstrated a concept they called Evil Never Sleeps. They proved that even when an iPhone is totally shut down, it's Bluetooth, NFC, that's what you use for Apple Pay, and the ultra-wideband chips all stay on in a low-power mode. But here's the truly alarming part. They showed it's possible to load malware directly onto the Bluetooth chip itself. That malware then runs completely independently of the main operating system. This means an attacker could, theoretically, modify the chip's firmware to broadcast your location or do other nasty things, all while your phone appears to be completely dead. That's a whole other level of compromise. Alright, let's shift gears. 
This next method takes us into the world of state-sponsored surveillance. And just to be clear, this isn't theory or science fiction. These are real tools. And we know they exist because they've been documented. Thanks to the documents leaked by Edward Snowden, we got a glimpse into just how powerful government surveillance tools can be. Those leaks revealed that GCHQ, that's the UK's equivalent of the NSA, had developed a whole collection of spy tools they cheekily called the Smurf Suite. And the most powerful tool in that whole kit was one called Dreamy Smurf. This thing gave an agency the ability to remotely and silently turn a target's phone on or off whenever they want it. And get this, it was activated by a specially crafted text message, a silent SMS, that your phone receives and processes without ever giving you a notification. Once Dreamy Smurf was on the phone, the physical power button was basically useless. An agent could turn your phone's microphone on to listen in on a meeting, and you would have absolutely no idea your device was even powered on. Now, as scary as all that high-tech malware and state-sponsored stuff is, not all tracking needs to be that sophisticated. You know, sometimes the simplest, most direct approach is the most effective. Just physically sticking a tiny independent tracker right on your phone. And what's absolutely nuts about this method is how cheap it is. You can buy a tiny, effective GPS tracker online for less than 20 bucks. That makes this kind of surveillance accessible to pretty much anyone. No hacking skills required whatsoever. I mean, we are talking about GPS trackers that are the size of a credit card and only a couple of millimeters thick. It would be incredibly easy for someone to slip one of these behind your phone case and you might never even notice it. They have their own battery, their own SIM card. They can run for weeks, sometimes months on a single charge, waking up every so often to get a GPS signal and then send that location to a server. And the person tracking you just logs into a website and sees your entire location history on a map. And because it's got its own power, it doesn't matter if your phone is on, off, or has a completely dead battery. It just keeps on tracking. Okay, so knowing these threats are out there is one thing, but now we need to talk about building your defense. What can you actually do about all this? Well, here is a practical seven-step plan to help you start taking back control of your digital privacy. Let's walk through this defense plan. Number one, for true 100% off-the-grid peace of mind, you need a Faraday bag. This is a special pouch that's lined with material that blocks all radio signals. We're talking cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, everything. You put your phone in, you seal it, and it's like it just vanished from every network. Two, install a good security app, something like Certo Anti-Spy. Run regular scans with it. These apps are designed to hunt for the kind of malware we've been talking about. Three, and this is a big one, always keep your phone's operating system and all your apps up to date. Those updates aren't just for new features. They contain critical security patches, just turn on automatic updates. Four, secure your cloud account. This is absolutely crucial. Use a long, strong, unique password for your Apple or Google account. And please enable two-factor authentication. That makes it so much harder for someone to get into your Find My Data. Five, only use authorized and highly rated repair shops. A sketchy third-party shop is a perfect place for someone to install malicious hardware or software. And finally, number six, get into the habit of physically inspecting your phone. Once a week, take your case off, Look for anything that doesn't belong. Any weird thin cards, tiny chips, or stickers you don't recognize. So, at the end of the day, it's pretty clear that your phone's power button might not be the absolute kill switch you thought it was. But knowledge is power. And now that you understand these threats, from the fake shutdowns and exploited features to the hidden hardware, you can actually do something about it. Awareness is your single best defense. So I'll leave you with this question to think about. Is your power button a real privacy switch, or is it just a suggestion?